Okay, so hey, we've got Kimmy here. We've got Kathy Keaton, Suni, Linda. Oh, frozen, frozen, interrupted again. Deborah Merrime, they are all saying frozen. Here, Myra, hi, Myra. Yo, Tom says, no pressure, bud, no pressure. Jeez, I just want to just film something really good. I don't know. Okay. Okay. All right. I'm going to keep going. I don't know what you guys are saying anymore. You're all, okay. Kristen, can you share this to the Jewel Tool group, please? I tried doing it and it froze. <laughs> okay. So, you guys, I'm going to show you guys. Yaro says, keep going. Maybe they'll pick up. I don't know, Yaro. I don't want to do this for nothing, but I'll just keep going. So, basically, I'm going to show you guys when to use the course let me show you guys yeah i'm going to start off with the course and i'll show you guys really what the benefits are for the course so a lot of people george ann said oh just in time for a frozen screen am i still frozen yeah if i'm frozen what am i going to do just entertain myself out here Oh, Yarrow says he's recording this, and if it still stays frozen, he's going to post the recorded version. So I'm going to go on and pretend I'm in a happy land of non-frozen screens. So here we go, you guys. So this is the course wheel. Let me show you what, the new, what a new one looks like. So this is the, the course. Okay, so it's the brown colored one, right? So I'm going to use the course. And this is what I like to use the course for. So do you guys see? So this is a Kevin Potter die. And do you guys see how there's like this peg right here? Do you see that? Can you guys see that really sharp piece of metal right there? Okay, so right here, um, so instead of using, so you can use, for example, everyone will, is going to tell me, well, Ani, why aren't you going to use the purple to knock that down? I can use the purple to knock it down. However, if I use the purple on such a, like a large, smooth, flat surface, it's going to leave sandpaper marks everywhere. Now, once it leaves sandpaper marks everywhere, guess who has to clean that up? Me. I don't want to clean up sandpaper marks. Forget that. So the best alternative is to use the course. And so watch how this will remove that. So since it's sharp and pokey, the reason why I don't want to use, let's say, my fine is because this sharp, pokey thing could tear my fine. We have a stronger uh, family member. He's got bigger muscles and can handle that sharp or rough so if you have like rough sharp edges or heavy burrs I really recommend to get the course so watch how I'm gonna get rid of that watch that Do you guys see that and you see I'm almost even there nice and even do you guys see that perfectly even it's no longer there super smooth you see that and what's nice is it didn't create any kind of like sandpaper marks do you see how smooth that is and this is the course so the course is great for doing that and you could even shape these if you needed you know even more of a shape you know see i don't you know i can even do this with the other one but just to give you an idea of how fast now let's say i want to clean this up um i notice there are some deeper pits here do you guys see that so i might opt for let's say the medium Okay, and I'm going to now segue 
into what the medium is good for. So you guys got the idea of what the course does. It's a beast. It, you can put it through a lot of, you know, sharp things, heavy burrs, and it'll withstand the beating. Do you know what I mean? But don't use your medium to do stuff like that. So let's go ahead and run the medium. So right here. So look at this. So if I want to clean the rest up, do you guys see how smooth it is? And we're going to get rid of all those nasty lumps and bumps there. And then let's say that, you know what, you find it a little difficult to work on. Oh, hold on. I get my finger out of the way. See, that's, that's all I did is I touched it. Just so you know, that's the extent of, whoa. Oh, it's getting a little warm. Now, if it's going to get warm, you guys, remember, I have my new little clippers here. And let's just pin that down real quick. There. So it's an added little helper. So look at this. I forgot that I have them, you guys. So there's like this little pit. I don't know what it is. So do you guys see how I got rid of that little pit that was there? It's gone. And look how even and smooth that is. So all these little pits that you have, just hold it there. Hold on. Just hold it there and get rid of it. There we go. So as much as I can without hitting my little snipper. And then I can take this off and flip it around, but just for time's sake, we're not gonna do that. Just make sure. Now, the medium is a nice smooth finish. Take a look at how smooth that is. But if you're working on something soft like this, to get rid of some of those rub marks, it would really be nice to have, for example, like a very fine on hand. Because the very fine, it kind of is self-explanatory. It will leave a very fine finish, which makes polishing or just leaving it like that matte, like super nice. So look, so if the lines are going like this, I don't want to follow the same exact lines. I kind of want to tilt it and combat the line pattern, the little scratch pattern. You just hold it like this and just kind of glide over it like ever so lightly. Kind of change the scratch pattern. And just make sure you get rid of all those scratches. You see how nice that is? There we go. And that should do it. There we go. Let me should make it nice and smooth so you guys can all see how polished that is pretty much. So the very fine makes the polishing stage super easy. Like we're talking super easy. So just to give you an idea, so that was the very fine. And let's say I wanted to take it to a polish. I would just grab my felt polishing wheel. And so if you're going to polish, remember, your polishing wheel should look, has, should have a glaze, like a sheen to it after a while. It shouldn't be... Well, I want to say it shouldn't be too fluffy. Okay, so it should be like this. So let me go ahead and so look, at, I start more in the middle and I work my way out even on the edge. Okay, so I do that and I repeat that a few times. So again, if I'm like this, kind of change your scratch pad and within seconds, you should already get like a polish. Do you guys see that polish? Okay, so that's that. So I'm going to keep going, you guys. So you guys get the idea of how to polish this. Beautiful. You guys get the idea. I just hold it there inch by inch, kind of just hold it there, get rid of some of the little pits lingering behind. And if you feel like you need more compounds, so that's the polish. You could do that. You know what I mean? So again, and then if you want to polish this, just remember if you're going to use like your magic buff, Sometimes, you know, you guys, I keep forgetting to tell you, the Magic Buff, if you run at slow speed, it actually is nice. Hold on, let me clean up some of any kind of extra compound because I don't want any of that compound to transfer onto my buff. Do you guys see how polished? So I have it running at slow speed. I'm actually going to use this. It's quite nice. So, you know, you don't want to rely a thousand percent and just do it like this. I always give whatever it's pinching a support. You know what I mean? So there we go. If you use that, you guys see how it doesn't leave any black marks at a lower speed? Just hold it there and kind of do it slow. Do you guys see that polish right there? You just can keep going. I only did the two parts, but 
So if you just hold it there light, uh, at a slow speed, you'll really get a super high polish. You see that? Po oh, there. That's a good polish sh shot. So that's that. Okay. Now, let me keep going because now I'm going to show you we're going to get a little advanced. Okay. So let's say you say, but Ani, I have curved areas. What do I do for the curved areas? Well, so this is a sand casted piece. Uh, Leslie, <laughs> Leslie Stewart actually casted this using uh, Craig, somebody, Craig D Dabbler or something. They're sand casting little system. So I don't know, she has a lot of leftover silver here, but for the most part, you see how it's got curves. I have done this on a live back like two years ago. I did a whole, I removed it, I did the inside outside and I cleaned one up. So I have a second one. So I'll show you guys how I cleaned this up. Now, you guys see how rough it is? It's extremely rough. You see that? Look, see how super rough that is? Okay, so you're being like, wait a second, honey, it's got curves. How do I do that with the scratch eraser? Well, I have an answer for you. Now, you can use either the medium or you can use the fine. But I'm going to use the medium. And I'm going to make sure my edge is there. It's not a flying saucer. I always say a flying saucer means it's very curved. So the edge is not as prominent and crisp as this. So a lot of the women have taught me they keep one flying saucer and they keep one nice and crisp. I used to say that about the felt wheel, but my own people have taught me something. So I'm going to run this at high speed. And so do you guys see how it's curved? It's a curve. So I'm going to go and clean up all those sides. Watch this. So you hold it right here. So I'm holding it right here. Yeah. So I get a nice footing. You guys see that? And so once I do that, yeah, do a side view of how I'm going to feather it. So I have a nice little footing. And then watch how I'm going to feather it in. And you can just ride that curve. You see that? And it's getting rid of any kind of porosity that has come up. Do you see that? And it's clean. One shot and I'm ready for a high polish, you guys. So I'll just keep going. So you start here. And there's a lot of porosity. Look at look at where we're at. I just want you guys to see what, yeah, is that clear of what it looks like? And as I hold it there with the scratch eraser, it's going to blend it. Watch this. So I'm going to hold it there. So I'm going to work it. Watch this. Hold it and go back. Kind of rock it back and forth and blend the metal until the whole thing is gorgeous. Look at that. It got rid of any kind of pits, unevenness, and just blended the metal. And that's the shape we're working with. You guys see that? And so here we go. So this is really important. So I'm going to work on this side now. So, wow, it's like, it looks like a dog ate it here. Look at that. That's horrible. Horrible. So you don't want to push. You let it do the work. So if you want more stuff kind of move, hold it there. Pushing is not going to accomplish anything, you guys. Pushing will just wear out the wheel. So if you just wait there and move the metal by kind of gliding it over and over. You guys see that? All right. Oh, that came out really nice. You see that? Really nice. And so, like, you see how much I gained by just holding it there in this one specific area? Uh, here, I'll show it again. Look, I'm not going to do any. I'm not even pushing. Just hold it there. Hold it there. Hold it there. Hold it there, people. Hold it there. Hold it there. Hold it there. Kind of move it so you bring in some more metal. Remember, I always tell you guys, it's like icing on a cake. You guys see that? And I'm not pushing. The pressure is extremely light. And look at that, boys and girls. Look at that. Like, honest to God, if you, would, if you didn't know me, you would think maybe I'm some magician, some wizard, something that was able to do that. Do you see that? I hope the camera's picking it up. There. You see how even that is? All the way. So we did this whole design. And from this nastiness, which would have taken you a gazillion Dremel 
items to get in there the curve the the car all of this the the silicone things to get into all those shapes you know you have to bend your emery disc to get in there and then you'll have like all sorts of sandpaper mess okay just to show you even if I jump off the medium let's say I didn't even go to the very fine since it's just a small area and not like such a large flat area I can go straight to the felt wheel remember that felt wheel we just used that's the one we're going to use again so again you guys this is how you do it so since I'm going to be working a little bit on the edge be mindful and put compound near your edge you know what I mean so here we go watch this guys like within like within this is how quick you should get the polish I didn't do anything spectacular you guys there that's the polish already done so now I stopped add some more compound so without compound you're kind of working without any kind of oil in your car you guys see that like that was two steps guys and we're at a high polish for crying out loud in here too remember that real nasty area and I'm not pushing heavy don't push heavy let the wheel do it there's a reason why it, there's a motor attached to it and look I'm gonna kick off some of that compound and say see you later bub there I got rid of that compound and now look at the finished product you guys like seriously You see that? I can do the rest of it, but I just wanted to show you guys how the scratch eraser can get into all these curves. You see that? Beautiful. Now you can hit it with a buff, or again, since it is curved, this is why I was telling you guys, I always use my my polishing cloth. This is, the, this is really, really fine polishing cloth. It's my favorite. So look, right there, even just that alone is enough. But if, again, you want to use your magic buff here, let's even use the 4-inch. People are going to say, how about the 4-inch, Ani? So, again, I'm not running it at full speed. If you run it slow, it's nice because it does what it needs to do. It gets in there and it high polishes. You see that? You see that? And I just hold it here. Like, what a transformation. You see, when you run it slower, you don't have that risk of any it grabbing any compound and throwing it around. So this was a two-stepper, guys. Curves. You see that? We were at this before. Let's just remind you where we were at. And then we did this in two steps. So do you understand why all of that extra handwork is unnecessary? There, dare I say it? All of this. Even this little weasel, you know, when you do the emery disc, it's all unnecessary, you guys. Really and truly. I saw what I was doing, and so that's that. So that's a curve. I hope that helped. Pretty cool, huh, guys? When I show this, you guys, to, like, manufacturers, like, in Hong Kong or Mumbai, who, has th who have thousands of employees, and I say, this is how fast you can clean a casting. They, all they see is they don't even see Ani anymore. I look like one big dollar sign to them. That's the money that they save. Because number one, they're saving on the, um, the gold or silver because they're not losing material. Number two, they don't have to stop if they get a, like a hole of porosity. They don't have to stop and go laser welded or try to hammer it out. The scratch eraser, hello, my friend, will do it for you amazing you guys have seen it on the show where I've hit porosity a crater and it's filled it without shrinking the size of the piece I know magic I'm like one of those I'm like Glenda the good witch you know magic no I'm kidding I'm Ani the nice Ani okay so but I just want 
Okay, so I'm gonna move on real quick and show you what else benefit there is with the medium and then we'll be done. So I'm gonna show you guys the, so the medium and the fine, you guys, are very close in finish, okay? But the medium is a little harder. So it's gonna withstand a little bit more beating and it'll work on more crisper, flatter things. So whenever I need a really nice crisp flat, because uh, I use the medium because it doesn't have much flexibility. But you did see me use it on this. That doesn't mean it won't follow a curve. But if you want a crisp curve, medium is your man or woman. So in the fine is an all around perfect wheel because it has a nice fine finish. It fills the porosity and it has a little bit of a give. I don't know if you can see just a little bit of a give. So it does flat and curve, but this one doesn't have much of a give. You see that? I'm sticking my nail in it as much as possible. Okay, so let's get going. So the medium is going to give you crisp flat. So like, let's say I want something very, very flat. You see how uneven this casting is? This is a raw casting. You see that? Okay, so watch how nice and crisp it does it. I'm gonna hold it already. I'm not doing anything spectacular. I'm just holding it there. And already we have porosity pop up. Yara, do you wanna see that? Can you come here and take a picture of this porosity so I can have it to do a before and after? Of course porosity comes. So let me go ahead and continue. Look at, show this, that that's porosity, Yara. Is that good? Hold it. Let me get my fingers out of the way, Yara. Let me hold it with a plier. Yeah. Sorry, guys. I want to take a picture only because when I, I do a before and after, my pictures for my video are a little not up to Yaro standards. Okay, that's good. Okay, good. So we'll keep going. So watch right here, you guys, how the medium is going to, like, get rid of that porosity. Look, Yara, you can even take more. Take another picture of it. This is how porosity looks, you guys. It's these tiny little holes. Do you see it? We, we used to call them pinholes because it looks like you took, you know, the tip of a needle. Oh, grab it by the bottom like this. Well, okay, like this? Oh, like this. Just real quick. The porosity we want the picture of. Move your hand so I can see. Beautiful. Okay, good. So right here, so well, how you get rid of this porosity, and you have to be mindful you have prongs here. So we're going to be very like careful to stay away from the prongs. So I'm going to hold it here. I'm going to bring in metal here and bring it up. Bring in metal from the top and bring it down. And right here, you guys, the porosity is gone. Gone. That It took like literally, what, three, four seconds? Look, no porosity. Yeah, is that, can you see that there's no porosity? There is a little pit here, you guys. And oh, most importantly, look how there's, it doesn't thin the shank. The shank is the same size and the porosity is gone. Okay, so let's keep going. I'll keep holding it right here. So look, I'm gonna clear the prongs and this is where the medium really comes into play because the medium can really be like a detail. And look at that pit that it's blending and fixing. So do you guys see how beautifully it fixed everything? And without harming the shank 
or the prongs. The prongs are still intact. They're actually virgins. They haven't been touched yet. Look at that. So we'll just keep going. And if there's any area that you missed, you know, and you can't see it, by all means, I see a little spot right here, right here to the left of it. Just hold it there and get it nice and flat. Look at this. We're just going to keep going and work on the other side. So you guys see what I mean? Just hold it there and get it nice and even. Oh, we've got some more porosity coming up here, but that's okay. So I'm just going to hold it right here. You guys see how you can MacGyver this wheel? You don't need to have a small flex shaft. Everyone thinks you need your flex shaft. You don't. Nice and even, you guys. Just make sure everything is nice and straight. Fix it all up. All you do is blend the metal back again. And there we go. Nice and even everywhere we look. And again, the prongs were not compromised. The thickness of the shank is still alive and well. And I'll polish it. Everyone always says, oh, but Ani, if you polish it, it'll come up. So since I use the medium, it might be a good idea to hit it with the very fine just one more time before polishing because I didn't use the fine. Had I used the fine, then I wouldn't need to do this step. But I just want a little bit of a finish. Oh, see how it just gets it more shinier? You see the difference from the medium to the very fine? It's just lovely. So if you really have a problematic area, you know what I mean, that really needs some special care, definitely use your uh, very fine and I hope this has helped let's keep going there we go there nice and even look at that okay so let me go ahead and polish now just make sure I'm got it nice and even there we go I just want to keep it like this, beautiful. Now, if you want to hit the prongs, you can, but you can just make them nice and straight and flat, and that's all you need to do. And then now we will polish. Here we go. So let me grab the felt wheel. Again, since I'm going to be using a little bit of the edge to get into these areas, don't forget to put compound wear on the edge. So give yourself a good amount. So we're going to hit it real quick. So this is where the porosity was. You look, you guys, do you guys see the porosity anymore? No, I don't see porosity anymore. Let me just polish it properly. Let me get in every angle I could possibly get into. Hold on. Very little touchy little spot. Okay, so now we've polished it. Just take a look at this, dear Lord. No porosity, nice and polished, nice and thick. Let me get this out of the way so you guys can see how thick it is still. Beautiful. And then we'll keep going. So look, you see how it's not doing that much? Add some more compound. Don't be afraid, compound is your friend. Especially this, this is just fine compound. I'm just gonna do the whole thing, nice and even. Let's just follow all the way across. And there we go. And you can touch up the prongs too if you want, all for good measure. And there you go. No more porosity. See how the porosity didn't come back up? It's just lovely. If I miss the spot, all you do is just go over it. I think I missed a little bit of a, a scratch. Just hold it there. Just zhuzh it back and forth. And there you go. There. That scratch is gone. Now I put my fingerprints all over it. There. So that's that. So, so I'm recording this, you guys. So if you guys can't hear it, I'm going to post it right after the show. So there. You see that?
Okay. So that's that. So see how you can do crisp edges? Now, I'm going to show you guys uh, one more thing. Everyone's going to say, but I have the fine. Now, the fine is a jack of all trades. How about that? So the fine could do this. Ready? So let's say I have, so this is a piece that we had hammered. So do you see all the hammers that we did on a previous show? I was showing how to use the Fordham hand piece to get all these cool little um, designs that we MacGyvered and changed the uh, anvil tips to. So let's say that you want to clean this up. This is what the fine. So the fine will handle all of this. It'll do it, guys. You just hold it there and it'll clean up all that nastiness without creating, oh, it's getting a little warm. I can use my little handy dandy third hand. Excuse me, we're gonna take you off. So it's good to have another one. Hold on, <laughs> never mind. I'll just put this one here. So these are really good. These are my new little clippers. These are the really good ones, made in the USA. And it has a two function. So if I lifted it up, I can even do some, hold something thicker. Oh, now I feel like Hercules, Hercules. Oh yes, baby. You see, you can really hold it there and watch how it blends it all away, you guys. It blends all those pits away. Look, do you see how it does? So the, the, the this is the fine, you guys. The, the fine is a jack of all trades. That's why it's included in pretty much all of our metal smithing kits because it's like definitely one of the staples. You guys see how it cleaned up all, all, baby, all. What's cool is there's, if you had to close your eyes to look, feel a transformation, you can't even feel where, I can't explain it. If you don't have a jewel tool, you don't know what I'm talking about. But you can feel where I worked here or where it started and where it ended. It's just so transitional. You can't feel it. So from here, you can go straight to a high polish. Don't get me wrong. That was the fine. Before I do that, I want to show you something else real quick before I forget. So the fine will also work on dome things. Here, look. Let's say I have something that's domed. Do you see that? It's domed. You can definitely work on it on dome stuff. Don't get me wrong. The fine is great. It'll conform beautifully. Do you guys see that? Like, and I'll look how perfect you guys can pinpoint where you want it. You see that? I can even do one straight line. Like that's how accurate this baby is. Look at that. You see that? And then from here, you can go straight to a polish. Felt. You see how mine is? Has a little sheen to it. Yours should look like that too. And if you're getting black, you're not using enough compound. So give yourself a good amount of compound. So let's go ahead and polish this baby up. So if the lines are going like this, I don't want you to follow that. Kind of tilt it. You guys see that? And watch how I combat all that line. Just hold it there. Don't push hard. Do not, I repeat, do not push hard. You guys see that? I'm just holding it there and kind of changing it up. And within seconds, you get a high polish. Within seconds, you should get that high polish. You see that? Seconds. So when you're going to apply it again, put compound one more time. Don't stop there, guys. And again, if the lines are going straight, tilt it a little. You see that? You see that? And kind of just MacGyver it around a little. Yes, so there. There. So this is what we've done so far. You see how nice and even that was from all the stamping and the whacking that we did? Do you know what I mean? It's just really nice. And then just hit it with a buff and you're done. Now, if I wanted to polish this baby, since it's curved, you know, all you do is just put compound on and that's it, guys. So the lines are going like this. So instead of holding it identical, I'll tilt it. You guys see that? I'll tilt it. So I kind of combat those lines and I just glide it back and forth back and forth back and five you see that uh -huh, and you can do it again so add some more compound boys and girls there you go now I'm gonna follow that same line okay so if you follow that same line you see how I yeah so I was cross polishing as they call it 
you know, I didn't even learn about that. It just came natural for me. It's just physics. You know, you follow the same line, you're going to create the same track. But if you go in, the, you know, a, a cross pattern, you're going to cancel that other line out and create another finish. And there you go. You see how that looks? All polished. And then if you have any kind of rub marks, you guys, this is where the buffs come into play. So here, let me go ahead and take off some of the compound with my uh, polish. So you can even rub it with this because this will even cancel out some of those rub marks. Do you guys see that? Because it's such a fine cloth. You see how there's no fine lines? Some of the reflections you guys see, you guys, sorry, it is my heavy duty light, so that's why I kind of tilt it to the side. And so some of these little fine lines can be taken out with the magic buff and again, run it at slower speed. And you just hold it there. Don't push too hard. Kind of just hold it there and let it do its magic. You don't want it too fast. Yeah, you just want it a little bit. There you go. You guys see that? I have a little black there. Hold on. It probably grabbed some of the compound and pushed it up, but it's okay. That's what this is here for. Oh my God. <gasps> Look at that polish, you guys. Mingo is growling at somebody. Do you guys see that polish? Yeah, I still have some black. Mingo, what's happening? Hold on. Okay, so there. I have to have it perfect. If not, I can't sleep at night. So, okay guys, I have to go. <laughs> I hope that helped out at trying to figure out. Okay, hold on. Mingo, mommy's doing a video. Please, show him. So this is, this is him. Okay, so we're gonna hear this for a bit because they're picking up some stuff here today. Um, the freight company. So you guys, I hope you guys understood what I did. And if you didn't, it's found in your user guide. Look, this is your user guide you get with the jewel tool. It's found under the, the quick reference. You guys see how it says abrasive quick reference? And it tells you coarse, medium, fine, very fine, and then it tells you what each one is for. The coarse used for very rough surfaces, you know, medium, very flat, uh, flat and contoured is the fine, and the very fine gives you all sorts of fine finishes. So I hope this video helped you. I just want to say a big thank you from the bottom of my heart to everyone who has been sending me amazing messages of support during this um, it's not crazy. It's just, I don't even have words to describe it. I, I've never experienced such a thing. I was born here in the United States. So all of this is very new and it's like a little shocking to me. So with your, I'm referring to the conflict. I hate that word conflict. It's not conflict. Let's say it like it is. You know how I always say, sit straight. I always say, oh, sit crooked, but talk straight. Well, let's sit, you know, talk straight. Basically, the attack upon my people in Armenia. They're Christian Armenians and they're being attacked by Muslim Azerbaijanis. No offense, I don't have any uh, thing about any religion, but they're just hiring ISIS terrorists to really hurt young soldiers that are civilians. civilians. I'm sorry, civilians too. It's just. It's just a very complicated situation and it's very, I get emotional, so I don't explain it quite well. Um, so all I want to say is I just want you guys all to know how much I appreciate the kind words, the messages that I've gotten, um, your comments. It just warms my heart and I just feel like I'm not alone, even though sometimes I feel like no one is listening to our voices. We're speaking the truth and yet, you know, the opposition is just spreading lies. And I just feel that, I, you know, I just want justice to be served. And uh, when I feel so, when I feel in despair, you guys come like little uh, superheroes and sweep me up and lift me up. And 
you know, that feeling of despair and hopelessness fades away. Um, so again, you guys, since I didn't explain it right, y'all was going to get mad at me. So I'm going to say it properly. No, no, I'm going to just clear it up. There is an attack upon the Armenian people in a, in a country called Artsakh. It was a surprise attack. They broke a ceasefire that was established back in 1994. We weren't ready for this. Clearly, the other side was extremely prepared and prepared on so many fronts. You know, military-wise, money-wise, um, and social media. There's like a war going on in social media. So again, you guys, from the bottom of my heart, I appreciate all your support and your donations. It's greatly appreciated, you guys. We know where those mo that money is going. It's not going into the hands of thieves. It's really going to help those in, um, in need. The military aid, the, the, the civilian aid, it, it's going to them and to help them. Uh, my girlfriend just left to Armenia uh, on Monday. She's a registered nurse. And already the things that she sent me messages are just heartbreaking so again you guys this is real scenario our guys are leaving los angeles to go fight on the front line so these are people that we know i've never been so close to a war like this so you know i have my moments in my days where it just is so overwhelming so i really appreciate your support and kindness and your generosity so on that note i will see you guys here on friday for friday giveaway um i won't be here tomorrow because a lot of stuff i have to do so my love to you all blessings good health and joy i send to you thank you guys again bye for now <laughs>